In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to configure MIDI in Frescobaldi using LilyPond. Now this has been by far my most requested video in the entire LilyPond tutorial series. So without any further ado, here we are. So here's what we're going to cover in this video. First, I'll show you how to configure your MIDI devices for both input and output. Next, I'll show you how to use your MIDI keyboard so you can actually input your score instead of having to type it all in. This is sometimes referred to as step recording. And finally, I'll show you how to export your entire score as a MIDI file. So let's get right into it. Let's begin by setting up Frescobaldi to see our MIDI devices, both for input and output. In order to do that, all we have to do is come up here to Edit Preferences. Under MIDI Settings, you'll see an option for Output and Input. Now, Input is very important. That is the device you'll be using to send MIDI data to Frescobaldi. So whatever keyboard you're using to play the notes into your score, you want this to be configured under the input port. Once you've configured your MIDI input device, make sure you have the right output configured, otherwise you might not hear anything. For this example, I'm just using the built-in Microsoft MIDI option, but if you're wanting to have more realistic playback and you have um, certain software that you'd like to play your MIDI back through, then you'd have to pick that choice here. I'm going to assume that most people watching this video are probably not going to make a full MIDI mock-up directly from Frescobaldi, in which they have to have a full MIDI template with um, amazing realistic sounds. But uh, if so, I'll make a separate video on how to do um, large MIDI mock-ups. But for now, let's just pick the default built-in MIDI playback. This will allow us to hear a basic general MIDI playback of our score. Now you may have noticed an option here that says close unused MIDI output. There's nothing wrong with leaving this unchecked, but if you have a lot of devices and you're noticing some issues, then you may want to enable this because when there's no MIDI activity for a certain period of time, it will just close those ports. So I tend to leave it checked. I haven't had any problems yet, and I don't think you will either. Okay, so we have our MIDI keyboard set up and we're ready to start inputting notes. It's as easy as coming up here to the Tools menu, finding the MIDI Input option, and then opening it up. It's probably going to open in a floating window, but you can dock it anywhere you want. I've got mine down here next to my log. I like where that fits. Starting at the top, we have MIDI Channel. Simply choose what MIDI channel you'd like to transmit your data. I pick All. It seems to work fine. If you have a specific channel where you need to use, just pick it from the list. Next up, you can pick your key signature, and you can pick whether or not you prefer to have your accidentals as sharps or flats. Now the next two options are really interesting, and depending on your project, you may or may not want to enable them. The first option is chord mode. Now what chord mode allows you to do is to simultaneously press keys down on your MIDI keyboard, and Frescobaldi will not engrave them until you release the keys. So essentially you can build a chord one key at a time, and when you release the keys, it will show that as one chord. Now, you may prefer to not have that behavior, and so this option here, when disabled, would mean that when you play a note and you don't release it, and you play another note, they will be notated as separate keys. Let me show you. In order for Frescobaldi to see MIDI data being transmitted from your keyboard, you first have to enable the Start Capturing button. Now Frescobaldi is listening to your MIDI keyboard for input. I'm going to begin by playing the first five notes of a C major scale, one key at a time, but I'm not going to release each key after the next one is pressed. And so at the end of the five notes, all my fingers will be on the keys, and I'll release them at the same time. Let's take a look at how Frescobaldi would handle that with chord mode enabled. <laughs> 
Right now, five keys on my MIDI keyboard are currently being pressed down, C, D, E, F, and G. Now watch what happens when I release the keys together. What we see here is that Frescobaldi has interpreted this as a chord, both in the music view as well as in the score file. Now let's say you don't prefer that behavior. You would like to have Frescobaldi treat each key as a separate event, regardless of if the key is still pressed down or not. Just disable chord mode and try again. I usually find leaving chord mode enabled is very handy, especially when you're working with large chords across a full orchestra and you don't really want to worry about having to go back and clear up the MIDI input and manually create chords. You'll also notice an option for relative mode. Always have relative mode enabled in this MIDI input window if you're composing in relative mode. Otherwise, you may have to actually clean up your score later and do some relative or absolute conversion depending on the input. Sometimes if I'm not using relative mode and I forget, I'll end up with a bunch of absolute pitches and it's just a mess. And so I usually have to go in and then fix that under tools and do a absolute to relative conversion. It's not the end of the world, but if you want to work in an orderly fashion, just keep relative mode enabled in the MIDI input window if you're using relative mode in the score file. Let's disregard the pedals here for the time being. We'll come back to that in a different video. That's more of an advanced topic for MIDI input. Let's just have some fun and input some pitches with our MIDI keyboard. Before we leave the MIDI input topic, there's no harm in leaving the stop, start, capture button enabled. I haven't seen any performance issues, but if you're concerned about uh, stuff like that, you can always disable the capture when you're not using your MIDI keyboard. But it's your call. Now let's talk about assigning MIDI instruments to your staves. In order to assign a MIDI instrument to one of your staves, you're going to use the same approach as you would when I showed you how to create a new staff in an earlier video. If you remember when we used the new staff command and we named our instrument, we used instrument name equals, and then whatever name we chose would show on the score. Well, this is the same with MIDI instruments, except they're not displayed on the score, but they're played back. So, if you use MIDI instrument the same way you would next to the instrument name within your new staff command, whatever MIDI instruments you assign, it will play back that sound for your whole score. It's that simple. Let me show you how it works. Before I show you the MIDI instrument any further, let me show you first how we can listen to our score. All we do is come up to Tools and go down to MIDI Player. It's going to be a floating window probably for you, and I have mine docked here right next to the input. It's a pretty basic interface, but it does the trick. Here's how it's configured. At the top, we have the name of our MIDI file that we're working on. Pretty straightforward. Underneath the MIDI file, we have go to the beginning of the score, restart the score, and play. Underneath that, we have a gray square that will display both the time of our score as well as the measure and the beat that we're on. So this will allow us to actually play our score back from different locations and not have to listen to the entire score every time you want to play back something. You'll notice when I hit play, it starts playing through the score and you see the beat and the time signature on the right side moving as the music plays, as well as the duration of the score under time. So if we stop that and look for a second, the playback has remained where it was. So this on the right side here is actually measure number and beat number. So if we're using bar numbers in our score, which we should be, all we need to do is tell the MIDI playback window what measure or what beat we want to play from. If we want to play back our score from, say, measure 30, beat 2, 
we just come down here and we're going to drag this slider until we get to the appropriate measure number and beat number and then hit play and Frescobaldi will take it from there. You don't have to play your entire score back from the beginning just to hear a certain section. Now that we've talked about the MIDI player itself, let's go back to talking about the MIDI instrument again. So we have the instrument name as cello. So let's assume we're writing a solo cello piece and the MIDI playback I'd like to hear is, you guessed it, cello. But what if somewhere down the line I want to have the MIDI file playback with a different instrument? It's really as simple as just changing the instrument name right here next to MIDI instrument. And now when we play back our score, it's gonna play back with an oboe sound. Now it won't make much sense, of course, with the score showing cello and the fact that the range is a very cello range, but it will play back the oboe sound because you're using the general MIDI instrument and Frescobaldi is simply doing what it's told. In order to illustrate the MIDI playback a little bit more, I've copied and pasted some music just to get some extra measures in this piece. Let's say you're working on a score and you'd like to have playback start at measure 19. How do we do that? It's as simple as just dragging the slider right here until the number below says measure 19 and then whatever beat you'd like. So for example, 19.1, if I can find it, which is right there, uh, that's the first beat of measure 19 for playback. So if I hit play, it just plays. So you don't have to play back from the beginning. It's so handy. I use it all the time. Um, it's just a lifesaver. And finally, when you're done with your score and you'd like to export it, you can export it to MIDI and you can also export it to audio using the MIDI playback if you wish. So if you find yourself working with a larger MIDI mockup and you have high quality playback instruments and you're using MIDI modules and you want to export your score once and for all without having to go to a DAW or another program, you can do that from Frescobaldi. You can export it as a WAV file and be done with it. But if all you want to do is just export a simple MIDI file, that's a piece of cake. Just add an empty MIDI block in your score block and you'll be all set. So now every time you engrave after that, you'll see in your log file, it will say that it's creating a MIDI file. And that's it. Once you include the MIDI block within the score block, every time you engrave, Frescobaldi will create a MIDI output, and you're all set. And there you have it, a full step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to use MIDI in Frescobaldi. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment for me down below, letting me know what you think of my Lily Pond tutorial videos. And if you have a specific Lily Pond question you'd like me to make a video on, please let me know. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. See you next time.